everyone. This is the meeting of the Board of Elections for um, election supervisors for May 1st, uh, 2024. It's three o'clock PM and we're doing this virtually on Microsoft Teams. Um, uh, uh, Chairman um, Williams, would you like to call the meeting to order? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the meeting is now in order. The time is 3.02 p.m. and it's Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. Um, I'm just now opening up the agenda that you sent. Um, I would like to do um, a roll call of everyone that's here. Um, we can start with um, the members of the Board of Election Supervisors. I'm Pat Williams. Um, oh, excuse me, I'm having a problem here. That's all right, Ms. Williams. Um, uh, Ms. Lundy. Is Ms. Lundy with Did us? Did you say Lundy? I'm yeah. here. Okay. Yes. Uh, Ms. Anderson. I think that's her last name. I don't can't. Yeah, she's oh. not present. She's not here yet. Okay. Um, Ms. Sojourner. Ms. Sojourner. I take it she hasn't logged on yet. So that means uh, currently we're we're waiting oh, Ms. for Livingston. Ms. Livingston. Ms. Livingston. Here. I'm sorry, Ms. Elizabeth Livingston. Saunders. Elizabeth Saunders. I'm here. Thank Saunders. you. Oh, okay. I didn't okay. add my last name. I'm sorry. I my, apologize. My, my apologies for calling the wrong last name. Sorry about that. I'm like, it's your email. So I always go by emails. Pardon me, Ms. Saunders. Um, uh, so then, yeah, then we've got three members here, Ms. Ms. Okay. Williams. Okay. And then we're waiting for Ms. Sojourner. Do you? Uh, do you want to wait for a few minutes or shall we continue? It's totally the will of the board. I think we just have, I think that she can kind of come in. It's also recorded so we can go and do that if that's okay with the rest of the board. Yes, it's okay with me. Okay. okay. Proceed. Okay, great. All right, then we can move on to uh, the second item on the agenda. Review of internal procedures, uh, the draft that was sent out. Um, I had a problem printing out two of those items. Um, and I can look at them on, on my screen, but I could not print them out and make notes on them. So it's going to be a bit of a, a juggle here for me to do that. I don't know about the rest of you. Maybe you can look at it without having a printout. Um, and then we can pro proceed with the, the yeah. second. The, the, okay, then the first item under uh, the internal procedures is receiving, scanning, and securing ballots. We can carry a discussion with that. If So I can do an introduction on it, um, Chair Williams, if that helps so that I can, and I can also show it on the screen. Would you like me to stop sharing this one and go to that one, if that would uh, be helpful? Yeah. Yes, that would be very helpful. Okay. Thank you. No problem. So um, so thank you, Chair Williams. So um, what we put together is receiving scanning. So I'm I'm opening that up and I'll share it right now. Uh, these were some of the procedures that were shared by College Park with us. And so um, we wanted to see, uh, and we tried to, what staff tried to do is put this in the form for Bladensburg. So the receiving and securing ballots, um, you know, would talk about doing, you know, we actually don't really need to separate into wards because usually it's one ward and the mayor, correct? Is Or it's, it's just one ballot. In our case, we don't have right. several words. Two, two wards, but one ballot. One ballot. So we don't even need to do that. Um, and then, so we can make that change. Um, and then scan the ballot into the mail tab for the Excel. What we would want to do is basically, um, so what they're doing here is that they, um, they these are for securing ballots that are received by the mail. Um, and trying to make sure that once you guys open them, uh, when we receive them, 
so really it's just that um, we would, this is how we would um, take the take care of ballots once they're received and then mark the voter received in date if we have that and then wrap it in the in rubber bands and then attach the post-it note to know which ones, which go into which, where they go and then to assure that they're secure and locking them and then making sure that they're not touched until the Board of Election Supervisors get them. So it really would be receive the ballot um, when they're talking about scanning the ballot, it's because they have a, remember we looked at, they have a um, a, 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 a barcode on the envelope because they get specialized envelopes saying, this is the one, the person you sent it to and kind of doing all that. If we wanted to add that kind of specificity, we could do that. So it kind of knows who you've assigned the ballot to and it would say, then you receive that ballot. And then you'd mark that, that the ballot was received then you would put that aside. So this is more from the standpoint of how we would get the ballots in and how we would make sure that we receive them as staff if that works for the board. But we could modify this, you know, to maybe remove one and to kind of change the scanning if we decide not to use a um, a more sophisticated thing. Any comments from anybody on, on this procedure? No. It seems very clear to me. And I feel like um, with a, a, you know, one or two modifications to suit the town of Bladensburg, but since we're so small, I don't think that should be a problem. Okay. So what we can do is we can bring it back with those modifications, kind of not doing it by the wards and just kind of saying, but it's just more because what we were discussing is, is that the reason why um, that helps is that if we have like all these little sub procedures, internal procedures, we can then say that we can point back to them. Oh, I'm Saunders, I saw that you were online too. I said, so I just don't want us to over talk. Oh, no, that's fine. I like the idea of marking it received with the date as well. Perfect. OK, so Chair Williams, do you want me to take this one down and move to the next one? Yes, please. We can just keep it moving. And then this mm -hmm. one, is that the mm -hmm. ballot collection log that we were talking about? I just want to make sure if I got that correct. Uh, are, we still, are we still on the same item that you just took down? No, I'm going to, I think the next one was, I just want to make sure that the second item was what? I just want to make sure I took the right, put the right one. It's uh, yeah, ballot collection log. Okay, so I'm going to share this with you and I kind of noticed something off the back, but I'm sharing it now. Okay. Sharing. This is the ballot collection log, which you can see. Um, yeah. What? The what um, College Park has this because we looked at theirs is because remember we were talking about that we would purchase the um, the the ballot collection boxes that are going to be the metal boxes that will be um, be drilled into the ground so that they can sit outside of town hall so that one people can um, and I, and I I think you've seen them around the county now and I think I'm. Uh, former councilwoman Lundy with the stuff that's going on with the uh, the um, with the county elections, I'm seeing them out in front of places all over the place where people can drop off their ballots. What we would do here. Yeah, that's correct. Town hall. yeah, so we'd create something similar for town hall, like a smaller version so that we would then avoid the issue of people feeling that they had to mail them um, in and us not checking the mail. And even when they come in the mail that we can you know, have a central collection point. So that's what this is, is kind of having a chain of custody log that we would pick them up on certain dates and then put them in the town hall. And if we bought a second box, maybe that would go in front of, um, you know, in front of the community center up uh, and near Ward 2 or be, or someplace else that we would have two of them. That's where we need to determine where that second one is. And that's what this would do is that somebody would keep this and there'd be a there'd be an official for the log itself. Just Chair Williams, I have a question about the location of the boxes. I noticed you only have 
box one and two, do you think we need more uh, in different locations? Yeah, I mean, I think the town is kind of, you know, it's hard because we don't own a lot of spaces. And because it has to be kind of drilled to the ground, we'd have to get permission, you know, because you want to have it in front of some places um, that we could do that. So I really only thought about town hall because I know we control this location. And I did think about seeing if parking planning would allow us to temporarily put one in front of the community center because it would then put put on the other side of the town. But I just was trying to think of places that we could do it where we had custody and we had eyes on it because we didn't want anything to happen to the ballot box either for convenience. Okay. Is there any ideas of other places we could do it? Well, you mentioned uh, the community center and that's what was on my mind. Yeah, that's my TPD. That's my TBD is the community center. I can put that in on the notes, but that's what I was thinking about trying to get permission with park and planning to put one there. And okay. then there would be one in each ward. Yeah. That would be, mm -hmm. that's my thought is that we'd have one in each ward. And maybe if we can't do the community center, maybe someplace like Autumn Woods or one of the apartment complexes that might allow us because we have decent relationships with them to um, have it there. But it just, I didn't want to favor one a complex over the other, if that made sense. Yes. Or maybe Elizabeth Seaton. I see that um, Ms. Lundy has her hand raised. Yes, Ms. Lundy. Yes, um, hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I, I'm, I'm sure this is going to be done, but we will be posting our um, polling sites where they can drop them off. Yes. Um, did you talk with the senior home to see if we could have ballot boxes there? No, that's what I'm saying. This is this is all preliminary to see, like, if we have this collection log, where to put them, and that's why I'm at. That's why I'm. That's why we're talking about it to kind of see where places that we could put one. But we were thinking about those secure strong boxes and they they cost between two and three thousand dollars a piece. Wow. So we can't we probably can't afford a lot of them. So that's why we were thinking maybe like someplace that was publicly owned, like uh, like the community center and versus having them at several buildings, if that makes sense. Um, so the library as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we could do one at the library and do a smaller one here at Town Hall and have the, the more substantial one over at the library if that works for them. Yeah. That's a good that's a good suggestion. Yeah, that would make sense. Thank you. Uh -huh. So that's the that's the collection process. Um if that makes sense. So we have room for three or four, but we can then come back and try to put that together for the board. But I just wanted to share those two with you. I'm gonna stop sharing, um, um, Chair Williams. The other thing on the agenda, I'm trying to make sure I get the agenda right. It's, um, is the next topic was to look at the candidate applications approval and oh, I said put processions. It should have been procedures, excuse me, um, would be some of the next topics that we would look at um, for the board. Um, I know that back, it's been months and I apologize that it's been a couple of months. We were, we were we've been trying to hire a new town clerk and um, we got some finalists and then uh, some of them were unable to take the position. So we're, we're gonna start again very soon. Um, we do have a new employee, Jessica Amaya. She actually works at our front desk and she's working as our deputy clerk. I just wanted to introduce her. Um, Jessica, if you want to say hi, <laughs> she's on, she's on mute. Welcome, Jessica. Hello, thank you. Sorry, someone just walked in. Oh, no worries. She's also at our front desk, so she's she's multitasking. Um, but um, Ms. Amaya is going to be helping us with trying to keep things moving, but the um, issues of the candidate applications approvals and that process um, back in, I think, January, February, um, I sent a draft of a candidate handbook, which I think will kind of address some of that. I will send that out again to the group 
today or Miss 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 um, I will send that out to the group today or tomorrow so that we can start to look at it so that um, there's some stuff that we that you can see that we can put together maybe a policy of how we approve candidate applications because last time um, Rich was sort of um, stuck doing that all by himself and kind of came to you guys at the end and then held some applications uh, because he wanted to do them all at the same time when we had different timing of how people brought them in. And I think there was some confusion regarding um, once somebody turned an application, are they, can they, um, can they campaign or not and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. so those are the questions that I think the candidate um, information packet answers because it kind of says, you know, because it's, there's not anything that says that even if you are not officially registered, you could, you can tell people that you're running. There's nothing, but there's only, but there is a timeline, which is what we want to make sure that we are, are sticking to with campaigning um, and signage, which is a whole other set of rules. So we want to be able to address those two candidates and then the whole process of approving residency and all that stuff, which is, a, which is also looked by the, by the town clerk and the chair of the Board of Elections in other municipalities, they both look at that information and there's a verification by the board, but the chair also gets that information. So we just need to put in internal procedures to say, once we get an application, when does that go to the board and, and, and how do we have those meetings? So I just wanted to, those are, that's what that next topics is, just to kind of introduce it. Is there any thoughts about what you would like to see or anything that we can bring to you? Excuse me. This is Chair Williams. Um, I think I would, before making an, any comments or suggestion, I think I would like to see that paperwork again, just as a you know, point of review, get some thoughts, gather some thoughts. Totally get it. Yeah, I think so. I think it would be helpful. And what the other thing, Chair Williams, would it be easier if we, when we do the packet, would you guys like a copy, hard copy mailed to you? Would that be helpful to, to have a copy or do you know that you can pick up here at the town hall? Because we can print it for you, if that makes sense too. Because I know this will be a large packet. Oh, yes, that would be nice. Thank you. I can pick okay. mine up. Yep. Yes. Great. great. Okay, great. So what we'll do is next, for the, because the, I know that that document is larger. So what we'll do is once we get it ready, um, we can have everything ready with the new agenda and have that printed up. And then, then you guys will let you know when it's here and you just pick it up. Does that make sense? And we'll also send it to you an email. So you have both. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. We just want to be helpful. I, I mean, we can, it's, you know, the paper is not the expensive thing. I know it's a little bit harder. To, sometimes people love electronics, but it's not, it's not as helpful. Um, no, so that's just really where we are. So what my thought is, is that any dates and times that work best for the group for our next dates or next meeting time, because, you know, we can put together some of the samples that we have and, and have that to you, for you to look at. Um, and then we can draft, um, we can draft some internal policies that you can say like, hey, this is how we see how staff should probably approve it. And then you can give your comments on it. And then you can then take the hard copies and then give us some feedback, but is there any timeline, you know, over the next couple of, in, in the month of June? I started this one off early so that if we wanted to meet in May, we could, but if you would prefer to meet in June, I know this is a busy time of year. I, it is for me. I, I have to be, I have to have a personal privilege is that this month, my daughter's graduating from high school and congratulations. Thank you. I'm excited. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. She's going to college. We're getting, she went, she's going to Purdue. I'm very excited for her, but we're trying to, there's just a lot of closing out in the month of May. So I'm just trying to get that all ready. But I was just thinking, is there any dates that work best for you all that we can kind of target in? I mean, the the last week of the month, the month of the week, but and I know we have Memorial Day, um, but maybe early June. Um, the second week in June would be okay for us as staff because we have a, we have some judges coming to look at the town on the third and fourth. Um, but I, we we do have time after the fifth or si the fifth or seventh, if that works, or the week of the tenth, if that works for the the, the board of June. Uh, Madam Clerk, this is uh, Chair Williams. 
that sounds good to me. Um, but I have a suggestion that maybe we could meet once a month. Yeah. Based on the, uh, the, the town's schedule, because I know the town is very busy and you're busy. So we could sort of play off of the time that you have available okay. so that we could meet at least once a month. Okay, that's great. So I'm thinking that the few, if there's any time of the fifth or seventh work, those would be great for, those would be better for me if that's possible. Um, and the same, maybe the same time, this two or three o'clock in the afternoon, this three o'clock in the afternoon time, is that okay? That's a Wednesday, the same way, the fifth. Okay. Yeah, that works for me. Works for me as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking, Jessica, it looks like on my calendar, I've got American Bloom, but they leave Wednesday, correct? They're done. Yes. Okay. So what I'll, we'll do is we'll send out an appointment then for everybody for Wednesday, the 5th at three o'clock. And then what we'll do is make sure that two weeks before, not only do you get the agenda, but you can pick up a printed copy. All right, thank you. Okay. Is there anything else for the good of the order today? I know this is a quick meeting, but I just wanted to start getting us meeting again. And I really apologize about the hiatus. No, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Well, I, I will see everybody in June and I'll have a graduate by then. So thank you so much for being Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. Have a good have a blessed day, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye. Right. And thank you okay. so, so much.